Uh, I'm Mayor Chris Coleman from the City of St. Paul, and on behalf of not just the City of St. Paul, Ramsey County, the City of Minneapolis, Hennepin County, the entire region, we are very, very honored and pleased to welcome Secretary LaHood to, uh, to Model Cities. I want to thank Model Cities for hosting us. Uh, Administrator Rogoff uh, is here with us as well, and we have a, a full house and a full list of folks that are going to speak to you uh, in just a few minutes. We are unbelievably excited today about the fact that finally the voices of our community have been heard loud and clear. This community knows all too well what happens when you become the victim of transportation decisions as opposed to the beneficiary of transportation decisions. Today we understand that we will be the beneficiary throughout this community of an administration of a secretary, of an administrator that understand that in order to have the kind of benefit that can come from a project the size and scale of the Central Corridor, then the stops have to be present in the communities of the people that are most dependent upon transportation. There are a lot of voices and a lot of folks that have held that vision. They have worked very hard. There are a lot of people in this room that deserve credit. But I want to say that sometimes uh, credit has to begin at the top. When Barack Obama came into office, and when he appointed Secretary LaHood as the direct, as a Secretary of Transportation, they understood that it was time for some just basic common sense in some of the projects that were occurring across this country. That it didn't make sense to put a billion dollars worth of investment to have something move through a community as opposed to directly benefiting that community. When last week, uh, when, when Peter Rogoff announced on behalf of Secretary LaHood, that the CEI would no longer be the barrier to good transportation and transit decisions. I want to thank you, Mr. Secretary. I want to thank you to Peter Rogoff and to all of you that kept that dream alive. We said from the beginning we were going to figure out a way to get this job done. We didn't know how it was going to happen. But when all of a sudden a little common sense was interjected into the process, then things got rolling and things got done. But there are a couple of other folks that I want to thank for that. The Funders Collaborative that stepped up last week and said that they would provide some additional resources to not just make sure that one additional stop or two additional stops, but three, all three additional stops would be built, has played an incredibly important role. And Lee Sheehy from the Funders Collaborative. Uh, and a lot of folks uh, in our wonderful foundation community that has played such an incredible role. But I also want to thank all of our county commissioners, not just in Hennepin and Ramsey County, but on both, uh, really the five county region that has put money to make sure that some common sense decisions could also be put into the process. Uh, Commissioner McDonough, who you'll hear from in a, in a minute, Commissioner McLaughlin in Hennepin County, and all those that have had uh, the ability and the foresight to really start putting some resources into these projects. I am just so grateful that this community that still has the hurt and the remembrance of Rondo can today say we will benefit by this next transit decision. We will not be the victims. Okay. Thank you so much for being part of that. Right. To turn at, uh, at this time to one of the champions of, the, uh, of this community, one of the champions of the stops issue, a tireless a very young voice. On behalf of this community, Councilmember Melvin Carter. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And thank you for coming to Ward 1 today. My name is Melvin Carter and I represent this area on the St. Paul City Council. With my wife and daughters, I live just two blocks from Western Avenue. So my family is one of those for whom light rail, as previously planned, would have actually decreased transit service. Well, that's never made much sense to me. A billion dollar transit improvements in our community should improve transit in our community. <laughs> Today's announcement is a victory for the countless people who stood up for these stops for over five long years. As one, we worked, we prayed, we shouted, and now we won. Central Corridor Light Rail Transit will stop at Hamlin, Western, and Victoria Avenue. <laughs> victory this is, but our work to ensure that this project will serve those of us who chose this community long before light rail transit is far from done. 
I'm happy to see the impressive cast of people in the room today, and I'm glad to know that we all understand the importance of this project and its impact on our community. And I look forward to all of us continuing to work together to mitigate the loss of on-street parking, to help small businesses survive construction, and to ensure that we will build our future here by supporting our diverse set of residents and businesses, not by allowing them to be displaced. Look, looking forward to the challenges ahead, this work will often feel just as impossible as our three stops did just a few years ago. We have a lot of work to do, but I know that with dedicated elected officials at every level, a community that will never stop pushing, and a federal administration we know will always say, yes, we can do what's right, even when it's not easy, that we have every resource we need to ensure that light rail will not only stop for our community, but will pick us up and carry us forward too. So today we celebrate, tomorrow it's back to work. Yeah. <laughs> And now speaking of that work, I would like to acknowledge and thank just a few people in this room today who have helped carry the load that's gotten us this far. I know there's some people here from the Stops for Us Coalition. Would you wave your hands? Yeah. Yeah. I certainly want to acknowledge uh, my partner uh, and, and colleague on the St. Paul City Council, uh, City Council Member Russ Stark. Yeah. Russ. Russ has been an incredible champion for making the for the cause of making light rail serve the folks who live and own businesses along the corridor. Uh, at this time, I also want to acknowledge and, and pass the microphone forward to a couple of our local Ramsey County commissioners who have worked hard and tirelessly. Uh, certainly our, our regional rail authority chair, uh, Jim McDonough. I also want to bring out to the microphone uh, someone who has been a tireless advocate for our cause, someone who's worked as hard and as tirelessly as anyone uh, to win these stations, and without whom this celebration would be tragically incomplete, Ramsey County Commissioner Tony Kerr. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Just for a quick moment, I want to acknowledge that this is a victory for all of us, and especially for those along the line who are closest to these three previously missing stations. We now know and can rest assured that the train will not pass us by. Right. Thank you to the entire coalition already mentioned. Thank you to the partners who've come to the table to fund these stations completely. And we know now that as we work together, as we have on this issue, on all the others that face us, we will ensure that we will realize the great opportunity that Central Quarter is for all of us. Right. Thank you for those couple of moments, Melvin. And now, my commissioner and chair of our regional rail, Commissioner Jim McDonough. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Redmond, i got to recognize Commissioner Redmond. Central Corridor not only comes down in the middle of many communities, but it comes down and is a, a, through two county commissioner districts. And Commissioner Redmond has been an advocate, a tireless reminder of the importance right. of these stops. Right. There's been a lot that's been said here, and there'll be a lot more that's been said. There's a couple things that I think are really important for us to uh, just take a moment to reflect upon in our community. We've talked about some past harm in the community and some of those scars that aren't healed yet. We talk about the opportunities that we've been moving forward on a possible light rail line, and those opportunities have been talked about for 30 years, and we're getting awful darn close to actually moving forward on a reality. And with, along with that comes a lot of difficulty, but I, I think one of the things that we have to just take a moment and reflect is our ability as a community to solve these issues together as partners, to build that trust as a, locally, to build the trust with the community, with elected officials, with the city, with our state delegation, our federal delegation, the leadership in Washington, D.C., that trust and that relationship can solve these problems. I, don't, I believe there's truly no problem that is insurmountable for us to continue to move forward. That doesn't mean to say there aren't going to be more meetings in community rooms like this, up and down this line, um, and, 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 and consternation about what we're going to do next to solve that next issue. But I have confidence in this community. I have confidence in this community that we will be able to continue to do that, and we'll do it in a respectful way. We'll do it in a way that continues to build trust in this community, and we'll do it in a way that will continue to build on the vitality and the potential that this line has to rise all of our boats, to rise everybody's boats along this corridor. And I appreciate the opportunity as Ramsey County Regional Rail Authority to be a part of that process. Thank you.